Atlanta, Georgia, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Jake Paul <laughs> against Funky Ben. Last week, you spoke to him. You broke through the camera. You spoke to your former Olympic teammate. You said, Ben, you're representing us. Show him what you got. Use your wrestling. Play a little dirty. Do your thing. Unfortunately, 159 of the first oh, round. Goodness. You know, a, a right hand from hell knocks him <laughs> down. Jake Paul defeated Ben Askren. You were weighing in. Everyone was weighing in. It, it was the talk of the uh, combat sports world. It was talk of the sports and entertainment world. Here we are two days removed. And I'm just going to ask a simple question. A simple question. And it's a complex one. And I know you could go in a million different directions. How do you feel about what happened Saturday night as Jake Paul, the YouTuber, knocked out one of the greatest Khalees of all time, one of the greatest American this is sportsmen the problem. of all this time? This is the problem with what happened last weekend. Because all of those superlatives are true, right? Ben was one of the better wrestlers that we've had. He's one of the better United States. I mean, there are so many things. To one FC champion, Bellator champion, there are so many things to describe Ben Ashton. The one thing he isn't is a boxer. And we all knew that. But I mean, what a spectacle. I mean, what a spectacle on Saturday night. I mean, which, I mean, which part? Are you talking about Ben's physique? The whole entire are you talking thing, about what talking about? The whole thing from Pete Davidson interviewing to the YouTube people to the, the, the TikTok stars to the drugs on TV to to the robot, to Justin Bieber singing, to all the concerts, it was a 10-hour pay-per-view. It was a 10-hour pay-per-view with all the concerts and everything included. But I mean, when you get to Frank Mir fighting against Steve Cunningham, Regis Prograce, I mean, a tr they mixed a, a real boxing match in between all that. Between, between which Cunningham ended in controversy, Mir, by the way. Which ended in controversy. Yeah. That dude, people want to talk about Al Jermaine Sterling. Is, is, I mean, come on. This dude, they're, 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 this dude was acting. But they mixed in a real fight between these two fights. Let's get to Ben. Let's get to Ben. First off, Snoop pops so hard when Ben comes out to Parliament. Gotta yeah. have the funk. Snoop pops, right? Snoop's the man. Poor Mario Lopez trying to keep everybody on task. At what point does Al Bernstein go, how in the world? <laughs> yeah. At what point did Al Bernstein ask? When did he ask? When do you think Al asked, like, how in the world did I get here from where I was? Ben comes out. Paul comes out. They're standing. Ben, for the first time, looks nervous. You thought so? For the first time, Ben looks nervous. In the build-up to this whole thing, Ben never looked nervous. For the first time, he looks nervous. The kid goes out. The kid starts to jab Ben to the body. Mm -hmm. Ben square. Snoop says at one point Ben has a 1940 style of fighting. Yes. <laughs> hey, that's ben not bad. That 1940s style, you better mix it up. Ben lands a nasty overhand right. I'm like, okay, Ben, okay. But then Ben is like not pressing him at all. This kid then throws the jab to the body, overhand right, drops Ben bad. I was actually okay with the stoppage because Ben would have got like really knocked out bad if yeah. they would let him keep going. But before I, you continue, can I just say, no. utterly ridiculous to to claim that that was ben rigged, got hit right? Bad. Ben got punched so bad. Though. There are so many angles of this thing. <laughs> he got punched with a right hand, and he <laughs> fell down to when he gets up. He's like stammering, like the idea. You know, you know who are the people who claim fights are rigged? The people who have never been punched. And I know yes. people will be like, Ariel, you've been, I've been punched enough. To know, and I've been around you guys to know. But now you for sure punch you. <laughs> but come on, <laughs> rigged? That dude is not falling like that if it's rigged. I'm sorry. No one's that good of an actor. And Jake Paul's like 6'2". He's right. a big dude. He hit him hard, man. Happy with the stoppage. But let's get to this, right? Jake Paul is throwing one of the most basic combinations in all of boxing. He throws the jab to the body, and he throws the overhand right. Right? He does it. Over and over again. I think he dropped Nate Robinson with it early in the fight. It's just a jab to the body. He starts hitting him to the body to try to get him to drop their hands. And he goes jab to the body, overhand right. And because these guys are so green in boxing, they get hit with this shot over and over again. A real boxer or a real competitor that has been 
at the highest levels and have boxed. Ben spent the vast majority of his time grappling, in fighting. Remember when he stood with Robbie Lawler, how bad Robbie Lawler beat the crap out of him? Mm -hmm. Robbie beat him to sleep and then woke him up by beating on Ben. Mm -hmm. Ben's just so tough that he doesn't quit on himself. Anyone that's seen boxing, anyone that spent time sparring hard boxing, is not just getting flatlined with a jab to the body and overhand right. You've seen it too many times. You just kind of roll the shoulder. They try to reach. They always try to bring their hands down to block that punch, that jab. All you got to do is just turn a little bit to let the jab hit the elbow. You don't want to try to reach down to touch the jab because the overhand right's coming. So it's time to stop calling this kid a YouTuber, though, because the kid has the understanding and fundamentals of boxing. But are they high-level fundamentals? No. But he does understand. And if, he continues to, and if he continues to fight guys like this, he will continue to look as he's looked. But the moment he fights somebody that has a better understanding of boxing, of the sweet science, that combination isn't going to land as effectively. And even if it does, he's not going to just be putting these dudes out because guys are going to start rolling with the punch. They're going to stop reacting so bad to the jab, to the body. There's just a lot of different things you can do to combat that so i have so much to say about this number one let me just say that the notion you know i see a lot of people being like i can't believe ben Lock. ben was retired mentally and physically ben had hip surgery, had hip surgery in august yeah. seven months ago the guy was done he didn't go out looking for this fight and so when i hear people say this fight was rigged when i hear people say it was fake and all this stuff this fight was not rigged that was a legitimate punch that was a legitimate knockout but you know what you can say, DC? You could say that it was rigged when they picked Ben Askren. Yeah. They knew exactly what yes. they were doing. Yes. Jake Paul literally has every fighter slash personality on the planet calling him out, right? He could pick anyone. They plucked the dude who was retired, who just had hip replacement surgery, who, oh, by the way, was never a good striker to begin with and said, we want that guy. There's a reason they wanted that guy because they knew that this was going to happen. And we knew that this was going to happen. Anyone that has seen Ben's career or knew the state of Ben's career knew that this was going to happen. And anyone who's being honest with themselves and knows that Jake has fundamental skills knows yeah. that he can actually beat up someone like this or a Nate Robinson or that other YouTube guy. So that's the only thing that was quote unquote rigged about any of this. They picked it. And guess what? We live in a world DC where MMA fighters signed with a promoter, whether it's the UFC, Bellator, one championship PFL. And in large part, the promoter tells them, here's your next assignment. This guy is his own promoter. So he is going to keep doing this. I see smart people saying like, when are you going to fight a real guy? Why should he fight? Oh. He, he just did over a million pay-per-views. He's picking and choosing all this. The other brilliant thing that he is doing, DC, and this is not me like stumping for him or simping for him. This is telling it like it is and not getting so emotional like some of you crazies online. The other thing that he's doing that's brilliant is he's turned this into Jake Paul versus MMA. He is going after everything. Who's the first guy he called out? Nathan Diaz. Who's he, who's he calling out? You. He's saying, and we'll, we'll let you respond to that. But it's very smart because why? The MMA fans get worked up. The fighters get worked up. The media covers him more than the boxing media. He has realized, oh, I could actually learn how to box better than these guys. And I can actually turn this into me versus MMA. And I'm going to make a boatload of money. So he is laughing all the way to the bank and we are all feeding into it. But at the end of the day, let's break it down like this. This young man has skills and he's a very good self-promoter. He knows exactly what he is doing and it is working. And that's it. He picked a guy who couldn't fight anymore, who was done, who was broken. And unfortunately, oh, by the way, 20 pounds heavier, DC, than, than Ben usually fights. So that kind of probably gave him a chance to you know, take his foot off the gas. He was never really in tip-top shape. He's especially not in tip-top shape at 190 pounds. This was tailor-made for a beatdown like this. Now the big question is, where does he go from here? Guess what? He ain't doing much better than Ben Askren. I can assure you of that. Why should he? He's winning. He's making money. He's getting more famous. Why should he fight someone who is 20 and 0? He's not going to do it. There's no way. Stop believing it. Stop right. asking for it. He won't. You know, and, and Ben struggled. And you're right. The kid has fundamentals. He understands boxing. And he can continue to pick and choose. Look, man, this dude is, 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 is he's smart in regards to how he's approaching this. Here's the thing. Here's where I, I, I spoke about it. I didn't like the way the guy was talking about Tyron Woodley. So talking tell the people what happened. Tell the people what happened. So Tyron was in there checking the gloves, right? 
because that's what people do. In boxing, in mixed martial arts, your coach can go watch. They wrap the hands. They can go check the gloves, especially in boxing. This guy starts talking to Tyron about, you don't know nothing about these gloves. But why? Tyron's just there to check out the gloves. Watch Jake get his hands wrapped. Tyron's a world champion. Tyron knows how to box. I understand this kid box, right? And this kid said, I'm signed to Al Heyman. But is he still signed to Al Heyman? Maybe he was, but he's lost fights. In boxing, you don't really get to lose three fights unless you're Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez, those types of guys. A guy named Jay Leon Love doesn't get to lose three fights and keep his contract. He doesn't have the value that would make people rush to still watch him fight once he started losing. But the way he was talking to Tyron is if Tyron wasn't on his level was very upsetting. So that's what I said, right? So then them dudes come at me. But the reality is this, and I learned this from, from a lot of people that I, 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 I spend time with you, per se. There's a guy calling you out constantly, but you never respond to him. I'm not going to do that because you don't punch down. I'm not going to punch down and fight a guy that's on YouTube. It's stupid. I fought for world titles my whole life. Why would you start to punch down at a guy that's trying to, I, I don't even know. This dude would not, this dude would never fight me. I would kill him. It's like, why would I ever fight someone like that? But my immediate reaction was, I can't stand this kid. You know what I'm saying? So like, it works. It's like, I can't stand this kid. But who punches down? You don't punch down to somebody. You know, I'm the guy that's in the Hall of Fame. I'm the guy that won two world championships at the same time. I'm not going to punch down to some kid on YouTube. That's like, fight me. Like, why? What have you done to earn the right to fight me? So, no, it's silly and stupid. But I would like him to fight Tyron. I would like to see him fight somebody more real. Don't fight Ben Askren at 190 bloated. Fight a middleweight. Fight Luke Rockhold. Fight Luke Rockhold. Let me see you fight Luke Rockhold or somebody like that. And then I will not only say that you have base skills, I will say you're a real fighter because right now it's all pretend. It's all pretend. So here's the thing. There, there's like this, um, there's this buzzword in, in society these days where people like to say this industry, this company, this platform, they are disruptors, right? We are disrupting, right? Jake Paul is disrupting the boxing business. He's disrupting the combat sports business and no different, you know, I don't think anyone with a with a brain and who understands fighting is 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 silly enough to compare him to Terence Crawford, to compare him yeah. to Canelo, to compare him to Errol Spence, to compare him to Tyson Fury. No one is is saying this. No one is saying this by giving him props as a 3 and 0 boxer with no amateur history or anything like that is not saying that he's on the level of these guys, but he is going through a training camp. He knows how to throw a 1-2. He yeah, knows how to and he's also got money. So he doesn't, have, the dude has made a lot of money doing what he does. So he can just train. He doesn't have to worry about anything sure. outside of training. He can hire nutritionists. He can get the best coaches. He can get all those things that we can get as world champion. And there's he a lot of jealousy out, out there. And I, a lot of MMA fighters are jealous because they're like, look at the money, look at the fame, look at the notoriety, look at all this stuff. And I'm here, you know, struggling to make 10 and 10. So I get why people are upset and why they're all forming a queue to fight this guy. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.